Hello students, welcome back. So, I gave you one example that of free expansion in the previous video and showed that if you assume free ex you, as you, you assume that the free expansion uh, is a reversible process then logically you can show that second law gets violated. So, free expansion or any expansion in nature is a irreversible process. So, that's how we linked concept of reversibility or irreversibility with second law. Now, here I am going to consider heat transfer process. Okay, And uh, you know that uh, heat transfer process where uh, the only heat transfer process uh, that can be considered as reversible if the heat transfer is taking place across infinitesimal uh, temperature difference. Okay, If there is finite temperature difference then the heat transfer is always irreversible and that's how it happens in nature. In nature the heat transfer will be across always finite temperature difference and uh, heat transfer process is an irreversible process. But now we want to imagine or assume that uh, heat transfer across heat transfer across finite temperature difference is a um, is a is a reversible process. Okay, we want to do that. When there is when we assume that when we say that, see here, let's consider this these two bodies. One is body of temperature T1, which is higher than body uh, temperature T2, right? These two bodies. And let's say that um, if you say that uh, you know uh, if they are brought in contact, okay, if they are brought in contact, or there is heat transfer is allowed. Let's say that in a given time, okay. Uh, the heat transfer from here to this body is let's say Q2 ok let's say Q2 now assume that this heat transfer it to be reversible ok that's our assumption meaning what it means that now like from here from temperature high temperature T1 uh, heat transfer occurred towards T2 spontaneously and in a given amount of time, let's say Q2 kilojoules of heat was transferred. Now let's say that this is a reversible process. Meaning what? Spontaneously, heat would flow from this body of temperature D2 back to this body. We are assuming temperatures to be constant. They are considered to be reservoirs, right? It's a receiving heat, but temperature remains same. So from T2, which is a lower temperature, spontaneously, heat is flowing back to T1. Okay? Let's assume that. Now, if you say that, that means essentially what I am assuming is that there is a pump, heat pump, which is taking the heat from a low temperature body that is Q2 and giving it to high temperature body without any work from the surrounding. There is no, this is occurring spontaneously. Okay, this is occurring spontaneously. Now consider, let's leave it, let's, this is the assumption, in, in a way we are, uh, making violation of Clausius, you can immediately say. When you assume spontaneous heat transfer from low temperature body to high temperature, you are violating Clausius. Now, let's imagine here on the other side, between the same temperature limits, a engine is running and it is taking heat Q1, it is producing W and it is rejecting Q2. Okay, it is rejecting Q2. Now, if so this is the engine which is working in the same temperature limit. Here is a spontaneous flow of heat from low temperature to high temperature. And I am say, deliberately uh, saying that heat rejected here and heat extracted here are same. See what is happening. This is an engine which is not violating second law because it is rejecting certain heat. But this is violation of second law, right, Clausius. In fact, we have done that in other contexts equivalence but I am doing it again just to establish the relationship between reversibility or irreversibility with second law. So here we are assuming the reversible heat transfer across finite temperature difference, spontaneous heat flow from low temperature to high temperature. Now look what has happened. Heat has been flowing in Q2 amount of heat, let us say rate or per whatever time unit but say Q2 is flowing to this sink, from, uh, from the sink Q2 is taken out. That means this sink has lost its meaning. The sink mean I have explained that in detail. So sink has lost its meaning. That means you can you are just connecting this here so that this body is removed. You can remove this body because this has not lost its relevance. Reservoir has to net heat has to flow out. Uh, sorry, has to flow inside the reservoir. 
But now reservoir was taking the same amount of heat, giving the same amount of heat. So obviously the reservoir has lost its relevance. So see what is happening now. You are getting work, right? You are getting work by having heat interaction only with one body. There is so there is no heat rejection. How much heat is flowing here? Actually, if you see Q2 is coming here, Q2 is going back, right? So this is W which is Q1 minus Q2. Okay, this is Q1 minus Q, right? So you are getting W, you are getting W uh, work and uh, by having heat interaction only with one body. So from this body, net heat flowing out is Q1 minus Q2, all of it is converted into work. There is no heat rejection, there is no sink. So remember, it is violation of which law? Second law and Kelvin Planck's, uh, the which statement? Kelvin Planck statement. So if you assume that uh, heat transfer in, uh, across finite temperature difference is a reversible process you would end up violating the second law so that is the connection between reversibility and irreversibility you know with second law thank you